Welcome everybody, I'll be showing you guys how to get the Vanquisher Seal at roughly 34,000 Soul Memory. To do this, you're going to have to start Steam in offline mode or play the game in offline mode because we'll be taking advantage of a Dark Phantom, NPC Phantom, that will be spawning in infinitely that we can kill for all stones. And I'll be showing you an easy strategy to take him out at such a low soul level or soul memory. The reason we're concerned about soul memory is that the game matches you against soul memory, not soul level. And in this guide, we'll be only killing three bosses. Two of, well, basically the three bosses that, that we're killing will be kind of insignificant. And we want to get the Vanquisher Seal as fast as possible so that we can have fun with as much content with the Vanquisher Seal as possible as well. Would not be that cool to basically beat half the game and then have fun with the Vanquisher Seal, right? And then we can surprise some Dark Phantoms that might invade our world by having essentially a max upgraded weapon at such a low level. So I'm just going to run through and grab a few items here. For this strategy, I'm going to get the Morning Star because I want to keep my soul memory as low as possible and the, and the Morning Star has pretty easy stats to obtain. I'm using Depraved because I guess it's maybe a little bit more challenging and I like the flexibility of their stats. This strategy becomes easier the higher the soul memory you have when obtaining the Vanquisher Seal. So if the Deprave Morningstar strategy might be a little bit too difficult, you could always try using a spear. Um, you can get the key for the blacksmith. He sells a basic spear for pretty cheap. And that would only increase your soul memory by about 5,000 because you might need a few extra stats to equip the spear over the mace. So when getting here, if you cause him to swing, you can actually run down to this bonfire, light it, and then sit at it and you don't have to worry about fighting him. Otherwise sometimes he'll walk down there and not allow you to rest at the bonfire. So now I'm going to go back and we're going to enter the Way of Blue Covenant because the ring gives us a little bit of hit points and a little bit of hit points will help us in the long run. We're also going to finally get our Estus Flask here. Uh, the reason we didn't do it earlier is, is just to save time. Since I was way over there it would have been better just to go to the bonfire and warp back. Now I'm going to run through here and we're going to skip these bo these monsters because we don't want to gather souls, as little souls as possible is what we want. And then we're going to make a pretty cool jump over here. I'm going to slow it down so that you guys can practice. But the idea is you kind of want to run parallel out this window, maybe aim for the corner of the bridge or so, and then jump. And you can make this jump a lot of times. It's pretty forgiving. So there's a lot of room for error. I'm going to cause that mon that boss or monster to swing and miss so I can summon Glenker. And the first thing that we're going to do is get the watch drag, you know, the shield uh, from the dragon. The shield allows us to have better item find. And I'm going to use Massless Glencore to help me take out some of these guys. Because my strategy, so what, what the essential strategy is, is we're going to get to Striad and get the Agape Ring as early as possible so that we can uh, prevent soul growth uh, and make sure our soul memory is low. If, uh, if Master's Glenker dies too early, just like warp back to the bonfire or die like I did and, uh, and resummon him. We're... Um, you have about 8,000 souls to play with by the time you get to the Agape Ring, and you have an additional like 6,000 souls, 4, four to 6,000 souls after that. Here's the, here's the jump again in slow motion. So killing these guys a couple times and the dragon's not going to be too big of an issue. Um, you you want to prioritize safety. So in this um, tutorial, I'm going to be doing this as easy as possible, uh, using as little like high skill as possible so that way 
uh, people can do it easily. So what I'm doing is I don't want both of these guys to attack Maskless Glenker, so I was trying to bait one of them while he took out the other. Because Glenker does keep himself at about half health. He does have a few flask drinks and stuff. And I'm currently using the Broken Sword, even though I don't have the stats for it, to kind of shave off damage uh, for the guy and try to get aggro and let Glenker do most of the damage. The reason for this is in case Glenker dies ahead of time, I might have to solo the dragon. And since I have 6 strength and 6 dexterity, it's going to take forever. And I don't want to lose all my dagger dexterity while fighting the dragon. Glenker chooses to like fight that knight down there. I don't really have a choice, so we had to get the, the Ring of Binding, which will help us, which can help you uh, when practicing these things. Uh, some of the, some of my failures here, I, choo I will choose not to edit out, so that way you guys can see how to reset. And that's one of the reasons why we get the uh, human effigies. In case we make some mistakes, we can always just rehuman. So Glenker died, and we're pretty much at the dragon. So we'll just finish these guys out. Uh, what I'm doing is uh, this guy. So he does a wind up swing, and sometimes he follows it with three swings. If he does three swings, you can get behind him otherwise you can do some timed dodges and I just kill him with backstab since backstabs do a huge amount of damage with the dagger if you're good at parrying you can parry him I'm choosing not to parry him just to kind of show you guys generally how to fight these guys without parrying he'll do if he does his slow wind up with the spear he's gonna do another fast slash and then a leap and if you roll forward through his leap you can always get behind him for a backstab so a slash last leap backstab um, he's actually really easy to take out. Now, this is very important. How you get to the dragon is you want to run from this pillar to that pillar with full stamina bar, and then just kind of roll once to the side, and you'll get to the dragon every time. Uh, the reason we... That's why you don't want to wake up the dragon by getting too close to the, to the knight, the lancer knight. So if you, you kind of rewatch that step, I only go up to the shadow of the lance knight, and then down, so I can so I can basically just barely aggro him without waking up the dragon. So the easy way to fight the dragon is you you attack one of the feet until he raises it up, and then you switch to the other foot, and you can pretty much dodge them infinitely. I recommend only doing two or three swings on the foot before switching. Another strategy that you'll see me do is I'll um, swipe three times and I'll back up, swipe three times and back up. The reason for this is I don't want him to walk off the edge because he'll kind of float off the edge if you attack him too much uh, in the same spot, like he'll just rotate himself off the edge. And then if you kill him while he's off the edge, the shield will fall into the water. Now when he flies up to bring fire, you just walk out to the bridge and you can dodge it just like that. You can pretty much rinse and repeat. Don't get too greedy, just do three swipes. You'll see me getting hit a couple times because I get a little bit greedy. I'm using two hands just to kill him faster. And I block with the dagger sometimes. But it, it, uh, if you don't want to get the dragon shield, that's fine. The reason I'm doing this is because we'll be killing Roy and Roy has a chance of dropping items like additional awe stones, um, the invisible Aureus set, some cool weapons like a plus five shuttle or a plus five heavy crossbow and I want to kind of increase my chances of getting it so if this is too difficult for you this is pretty much optional so you don't have to do it another advantage is we do get five human effigies from this chest so that can be helpful along the way you can always come back later to fight him as well I like to get him pretty early to maximize my item drops while I'm doing this and we get a little bit of extra experience to kind of level up early game. So now I'm going to get the stats to equip the mace. It's going to be about 15 strength and 7 dexterity, and then I'll throw the rest in the Viger. 3 hit points. Our final stats are going to be uh, having 10 in the Viger and also 10 into attunement, because we're going to be using some pyromancies against um, Roy. So I equipped the Morning Star that I picked up earlier, and I equipped the, the Dragon Shield for the item discovery. Now we're going to run through here again, pretty much the same way we did last time. We're going to make a little leap, and then 
We're gonna taunt this guy so he swings. That'll give us time to summon Phantom. Then we'll take the long loop around, giving Glinker time to spawn in. Yeah, I can see him spawned in, and then we'll go and challenge the boss. So kind of how we fight all bosses is you never want to spend all of your stamina, so I'll only ever do like one or two swings against them. And I'm going to allow Glenker to do a lot of the damage. And I'm going to try to keep the boss from pushing Glenker off the edge, otherwise I'll have to solo him. But since we killed the dragon, it won't be too big of an issue because I can actually do some damage. But if you skip the dragon and fight him with the dagger, uh, you'll be shaving tiny bits of health off of him for quite a while. So I'm just playing pretty defensive, pretty slow. Swing once, swing twice. You know, get the shield up, make sure I regenerate my stamina. I try not to spend more than 75% of my stamina because Dark Souls is a game that where they program in punishers for when you do use up all your stamina. So you want to make sure you always have the ability to dodge or block. And, the t and this time when I did use all my stamina it was because I know that the enemy was at the end of a swing and they had a long delay. Uh, so I knew I was going to be able to regenerate. So we'll just send this girl back to Majula by exhausting her dialogue. And then we're just going to run to the next bonfire in No Man's Wharf before we spend these souls. You can go back to spend souls if, you're, if you want. Be a little scared, but that's fine. Now we're gonna kill this knight over here. I, I recommend just doing a backstab and then take out your mace and get him twice because we want the sublime bone dust and we'll turn that in later to allow our flask to be a little bit more potent. So be more efficient in how we're spending things. And then we'll just skip everything down here because there's really no items unless you wanna waste uh, a fragrant branch of yore. So now that we're at the bonfire, We'll finish leveling up, we'll get Vagger to 10, we'll throw Attunement to 10, and then we'll save the rest of our souls. And we're pretty much done with our stats for now, so 10 Vigor, 10 Attunement, 15 Strength, and 7 Dexterity. So I'm going to slow the next part down a little bit, because this is the second hardest part of the run. Unless you think the dragon was pretty hard. Now we're gonna run through No Man's War, and technically we're gonna do, and we're gonna hit the bonfire like three times. Uh, so this will be pretty hard. So I recommend kind of running off into the water right here because the bandit to the right usually kind of gets a few hits on me, and I don't like that. We're gonna run up. So the goal here is we want to get to the bell and ring it, knock down the bridge, get to the bonfire, and then take the shortcut to get to the fragrant branch of Yor, and then get to the bonfire to reset, make ourselves human if we die during the process, and summon the phantom to take out the boss. And we'll be doing a similar strategy where we only hit the boss once or twice, um, so that way you can defend and allow the phantom to do most of the damage. If you want to make this a little bit more challenging on yourself, feel free to not use the phantom. But I'm just trying to do this so that way it's as easy as, as possible. Um, that item in the corner right there, feel free to skip it if um, the guys are on your tail too much. I usually skip that item, but I kind of felt like I had time to get it this time. It's pretty scary. You can get the item down there if you want, but I don't recommend getting it right now. Maybe on the way back you can you can grab it. So this Hollow is going to hit you in the back. He almost always does. Just ignore him. Don't get knocked off and just, just keep going. We're going to head to the bonfire to reset all the villains that have spawned and are chasing us. So now we want to get to the fragrant branch of Yor. I'm gonna, well, I guess we're gonna head back to Majula since I forgot to burn the sublime bone dust, and that might be useful. Just have a little bit more potent on flash drink. So we'll do that real quick. I should have done that when I bought the stats. So now we're gonna get the fragrant branch of Yor, and we're pretty much gonna run straight there. This part can be a little deadly. 
but sometimes it's not too bad. Usually if you have some bad luck, you might die, but... And you'll see what I'm talking about. So we'll ignore these people, get your shield up for the, the next arrow. Sometimes he'll shoot it like that. Uh, you can kill him if you want. Because we still are... A, um, we still have plenty of room for, for souls. And if you want to make the game harder, like you can technically get the Vanquisher Seal with this build at 30,000 soul memory, but it'll be a little bit less easy because you'll you'll probably be fighting Roy uh, straight up. So these guys, the assassins, have kind of a linear attack, so you can always stab them in the back. Now, usually that bandit doesn't follow me up there, so I'm just gonna run away. And at this point, if the bandit does kind of follow you up there. I recommend perhaps just going to the bonfire and resetting because you can see all these minions just kind of everywhere and it was just way too risky you know because typically when you get up to where the assassins are there should only really be the two assassins and maybe one hollow that follows you up there and you should be able to take out the, uh, the first assassin pretty easily and then just kind of dodge around the second assassin and the hollow taking those guys out shortly. I chose not to omit that that mistake so you guys can see uh, how to recover from some mistakes and stuff. So I definitely recommend in that situation if you do see the bandit follow you up there definitely like homeward bone or just run back to the bonfire and reset the mobs and then do it. Since we have limited human effigies I definitely recommend not wasting them it's not worth the time we will be getting the vanquisher well, I mean we'll be getting pretty much set up to farm the vanquisher seal in about an hour so an hour of gameplay and you guys should uh, be just farming Roy for the rest of the time so we can watch these guys they always just kind of jump forward and jump around so I'm having a little trouble here and we'll come down here and heal. One of the creepers went upstairs and he doesn't usually go upstairs. So we'll kind of use this table a little bit to grab them. So one of the techniques in Dark Souls that I've discovered is always kind of run around corners and break line of sight before you can before you use any flasks. So that's why I'm waiting so long to use a flask. And I thought I could maybe sneak in here, but then I saw them coming to my right, and I, and I was like, ah, I won't do that. So now the creeper didn't follow, which is nice. So it's just me and these two guys. So you can take out the hollow by waiting for the assassin to attack, and then either getting behind the assassin, because he always kind of jumps forward. He always leaves his back open. Or you can switch off to kill the hollow while the assassin is finishing its animation. Now in here I recommend killing, you have to kill both of them because they'll attack you. I recommend killing the guy back here by the poison jars first so that way if you're quick enough you can get behind this guy for another backstab and you just don't have to really worry about the poisons. These guys also have pretty linear attacks so they're pretty easy to backstab at the end of your attack animation. So here's our fragrant branch of Yor that we'll need to freeze Dryad with. Now I recommend switching to a two-hand mace. We're gonna break down this wall and then with the first attack you can always hit this guy for half his health and then use the first fast attack again. Apparently the, the follow-up swing doesn't hit him as you saw so if you just go R1, wait from the run and then R1 again uh, you can kill him in two hits. If you miss him, if you miss him it's no big deal. You can always Come back later when you're strong and get them. I got it. I might as well get the items in here, and then I'll be homeward boning out, so we can be human. So now we're just going to run through, grab the phantom, and then solo the boss. Or not solo the boss, but two man the boss, utilizing the phantom. So we'll just kind of run right on through. But this time around, I'm not going to kill anything. And we're just going to summon the phantom and run. 
The Phantom will follow us and ignore most of the creatures. And in the event, uh, it's never really happened to me while doing this, but it has happened to me in normal playthroughs where the Phantom sometimes gets knocked into the water. If that ever happens, just Homeward Bone out and resummon, you know, set the bonfire, resummon the Phantom. Now here it's very important that you just run straight to the boss because there's a bandit that's going to follow you from behind plus a bandit's already chasing you and if you give them too much time to catch up to you they will prevent you from entering this miss and possibly kill you and it's not really worth it. So what we're going to do with this boss here is use this pillar in the middle to line of sight the boss just keep the boss behind it until Bradley comes because we don't want to fight the boss without Bradley, you know, unless you have, unless you're confident in your skills in Dark Souls, we're just going to do this as easy as possible, because we don't want to fail, want to fail as little as possible with the boss. Now Bradley has the ability to cast heal at least once, and maybe drink one flask. So what you want to do is allow Bradley to kind of tank most of the blows and when he's attack when the boss is attacking Bradley, get up there, do maybe two or three swings, and then back off. Try not to spend all of your stamina. When the boss turns on to you, then back up and just defend. Like dodge, defend, don't worry about attacking, let Bradley attack and get aggro again. You know you're doing well if the boss has equal to or less hit points than Bradley. So because I wasn't able to pull the boss off Bradley. Bradley started to fall behind, but eventually the boss did change his target to me, allowing Bradley to kind of heal up um, and allow us to get some damage. And you can see I'm being very passive when the boss has me as, an, uh, as a target. So no need to, to be hasty, you know, 2-3 hits, back off, regenerate your stamina, 2-3 hits, back off, regenerate stamina. And no need to panic, you know, like Bradley and the boss have relative hit points to each other, which is fine, because then if Bradley dies, the boss will be pretty close to death. And you can see if spending too much stamina leaves you open to, to being clobbered. So Bradley's going to cast heal on himself, going to buff his, his spear up a little bit, and he's going to come back into the fight. You can see Bradley has a lot more hit points than the flexible sentry does. From here we can probably just let Bradley solo the sentry, but if you do see an opening, you know, definitely go in there, clobber him. Flexible sentry is weak enough that we can probably full combo him down. So now that the flexible sentry is down, we're able to get the pyromancy glove and fireball. Fireball may, will be a little bit useful for us, but mainly we want the Pyromancy Glove because we'll be killing Roy with Toxic Mist spell. Because Toxic Mist does about half his health and damage, so hitting him twice with it will do all of his health and damage. So now that we're in Lost Bastille, we'll just get up and we'll head to the first bonfire before we go to so, buy our next item. Get the bonfire right here. Now we're going to get the, the cat's ring from Shalakor the cat. So that way we can survive the fall damage because we'll be jumping into the pit. And we'll equip it right away because we don't have much else to equip for rings. Also we want to get the stone ring because it, does, it buffs the poise damage of our weapon and we can kill this guy pretty easily with fireball by just baiting him into an attack sequence and then punishing him. The stone ring can be useful, especially if you're if you're going to be leveling up a little bit more to use a spear, maybe doing a 40,000 soul memory run by using a spear, either the winged spear if, it, if you want to go make it drop, or the regular spear from the blacksmith. Being able to stun the opponent. So here we're just going to bait in the dogs kind of one at a time because we want to raise the, the gate. And we're gonna use like the the ladder to kind of line of sight the monsters here. We're gonna kind of bait the dra these one at a time. I accidentally broke this. I didn't I didn't want to break it because now we have a whole bunch of things. Just kind of run back here to to see if we can get a quick drink. So we line of sight them. The dogs have a 
they have a decent attack speed and they lunge forward. I got kind of stuck in the corner over here, so we'll just kind of redo this a little bit better. But they have a lunge attack speed, so the best way to fight them is to just kind of let them lunge forward, get behind them, and then swipe because they don't have a rear or side attack. So they have to spend time to already turn. And the nice thing about having the cat spring is when we get shot off the ladder like that by accident, uh, we don't take damage when we impact the ground. So same thing, I'm just using the single R1, I'm not trying to combo it because the second a hit has a chance at hitting the ladder. This one's more of a kind of a straight line hit, although I did hit the ladder that time. Heal up and let's see if we can not break this, this thing this time, we'll just get him like that. Another one out, I want to break the thing out, we broke it anyway. But at least we killed the dog, so it's just this guy. I was thinking about fireballing him, but it was just him, so we're good. Just clobber him with the mace, back up, use the ladder to line his sight and block him. We'll pick up, I guess, a common fruit. We'll get this guy, and then we'll get the next Estus flask shards. We get the three, three flash shards. And then we'll just run past these guys, because they're not important. And we'll go up this, ooh, well, be careful not to get exploded upon. But since we opened the gate, we can ignore all the dogs down here now. And just go straight to collect our thing, our blood stain. He throws fire, so we don't have to worry about exploding. We'll get the titanite shard, we'll get the antiquated key. And by the time we get the key, which is what we need, we don't have enough time to talk to the NPC, so we'll just run past these guys. We can always come back to talk to the NPC later. We'll go break through there. The dogs won't chase us through here. Uh, we need the antiquated key to open that door. Run to here. You can kill this guy if you want. Um, depending, like if you want to do like a sorcery style, you can get the bone staff in here. You can get the twin blades if you want to invest a little bit more hit points. I mean stats to, um, but this um, withered or herb is also pretty important. There's a bonfire aesthetic down there um, in the cage area in case you skipped it in as a starting gift. And we'll come up here and rescue Strad. The enemies up here never have never really attacked me unless I've attacked them. But now we're gonna want to get the agape ring because we should be at about thirty thousand. If you did skip the dragon, you might have to kill some things to get up to thirty thousand soul memory because he will not sell the agape ring before you get to thirty thousand soul memory. And this is what we're gonna use to prevent and limit our soul generation, our soul memory from increasing. So we're gonna kill this guy and get eight more life gems because they'll be useful against the rat vanguard boss that we'll be killing. And then we'll be killing this guy because might as well we're here. We're gonna get the Sinners Rise Bonfire. But also what we want is to get the Northern Ritual Band to have a little bit of insurance when we're fighting Roy. And these five lacerating daggers we'll get right here is gonna be is a hidden wall straight to the right. These five hidden daggers are gonna be useful as well against the Rat Vanguard boss, or can be. So after you get the Northern Ritual Band, uh, hop out, and then we'll be heading to Majula to jump down to the pit after we upgrade our Estus Flask. Made myself human. Because you need about five, 950 hit points to survive the fall, you'll see I barely survive it. And then we'll drink our Flask twice and drop down. And I made myself human to make sure I had the most possible hit points. And that's one reason why we use the Blue Dragon Shield is to make sure that we can survive that fall. Now I recommend killing all of the guys down here on the first floor because Roy will spawn one time in the base state and we'll just take him out pretty easily while we're getting set up and we'll just lure him down here to fight him without any rats because we fight him up top then rats will keep spawning and that can be pretty annoying. So when you come up here, Roy should spawn at the top of the ladder. I'll slow this down so that way you can I'll watch how we do this. So I try to lock on him as soon as possible. Then as he gets down, Roy is very susceptible to being stunned by spells. 
So we'll just lob some fireballs, create some distance. And we're primarily just trying to get him as weak as possible. This will be the easy Roy. He's going to be a heck of a lot harder when we do the bonfire aesthetic. So we'll not be killing him with fireballs. And you also kind of want to strafe side to side while you're throwing fireballs. So that way you can dodge his darts. And then since we have the poise ring, we'll just, you know, kind of just stun him to death with whatever is left. Alright. So next we're gonna, we want to get set up, and since we got a Pharaoh's Lodestone on our way into the pit, um, we do want to lower this bridge because this bridge is going to be pretty important for defeating Roy. We'll not be kicking him off the bridge because we do want to farm his drops, but this bridge is a leash point for the rats. We'll get the items real quick so that the rats can't chase you. And we'll get this item down here. The reason we get these items real quick is because using the bonfire aesthetic will reset all these items so you can get a duplicate copy of a lot of them. So now here's the hardest part of the fight. It's the Red Vanguard boss. I recommend equipping all healing items that you got. We'll be equipping the um, Withered Herb in case we have to use more fireballs. We'll be equipping the Lacerating Daggers. I think that's about it, right? Yeah. And we'll be very patient during this fight. I don't really see any other weapons that I can use. Yeah, no weapons. Be nice to have a spear. Spears definitely make this easier, so mace will be a little bit tricky. And then we'll equip our, our helmet. And have as much armor as possible and resistances. I think we're pretty set. So any other rings we can add? I don't feel I don't I don't recommend using the Northern Ritual Band. It's not worth it. We don't have enough spells. So I did die doing this, so I kinda omitted that. No need to watch watch me die fighting rats did die one time so kind of how you want to fight these rats is well, you can take that guy out right away or just put a couple damages on him but primarily you'll, you only ever want to do one swing and then get out of there so you take as little damage as possible and you'll still take damage and, and you'll you'll see the general technique same thing with the spear is we're gonna run through them we don't want to keep we don't want them behind us so you know uh, if you think you can get some more hits off, go ahead, but primarily if there's a bunch of rats like these guys, just hit one, dodge out. Yeah, if you feel like you're safe, or if they've lunged, you can maybe swing once, swing twice. That second swing was a little greedy, I probably shouldn't have done it. Swing once, dodge out. Now one of the reasons for this is uh, it's nice to get them all kind of weak. So that way when you are fighting the rat vanguard boss and things get in your way, they just get they just die pretty quickly. And if they all have low hit points and they're all close to death, uh, you can actually take down a lot of them at once and then um, you can actually have a, a lower rat count for a short period of time. So I'm just going to show you the, you know, just the general gist of things, and I'll kind of speed up until we get to the Red Vanguard boss. And the Vanguard boss is what we're going to be throwing fireballs at, and lacerating daggers, and stuff like that. So we're just mainly conserving our big ammunition for it. So we're just kind of speed up here, just kind of running around, not letting them surround us. It's kind of basically going to both sides. When they start surrounding us, we just run to the other side. Going through kind of my the life gems and stuff that we have accumulated throughout the process. After you kill enough, the red vanguard will drop, and then we pull out the pyromancy flame and try to fit, find good spots, good openings to attack them. That was I didn't really have a good opening there, so we'll just break target lock and try to like see where it's a good spot to be. I didn't see any rats to my left, so I retargeted him. Because the idea is we have limited healing resources; we don't want to spend them all uh, and fail. So if we're spending them like the life gems and stuff, then just kind of just just be relaxed. These rats are pretty slow; only take good shots. 
Like I hit him once and then I just kind of reposition because the rat started surrounding me. I'll drink a flask to make sure my hit points are topped off so I don't die. The rat vanguard will bear will almost be able to hit you with poison in one shot, uh, but he won't be able to. So I recommend so you can't really take more than one shot from the rat vanguard boss, at least in a row. So to be careful. So usually if you hit him with all of the fireballs, you can kill him in one set of fireballs. I missed a couple times. So now what you can do is use the, the Withered Orb to restore a lot of spell uses. Or you can try to take him out with the Lacerating Daggers that we got before. Uh, I, I'm opting to take him out with the, the daggers. And if that doesn't work, depending on what health he's at, I will probably use the Withered Herb. But just Dark Souls is a game that's that's the more patience you have, the easier it is. And if you are finding that you are having some trouble with this fight, feel free to increase your soul memory level, get some better items, maybe upgrade your mace or upgrade your spear. Um, you'll end up maybe you can get the Vanquisher Seal at fifty thousand soul memory or forty thousand. You know, no need to stress out about it. He was about one hit from from death when I finished my last rain dagger, so I just did that. So now we can head back to Striad because we want to buy the Toxic Mist spell, and then we'll use a, and that'll give us three charges, and the Northern Ritual Band will give us four charges, and you only need to cast a spell twice to poison Roy if he dodge rolls out of it. Otherwise you can and we have about 15,000 souls to get it. So I'm just gonna watch my soul meter and we're gonna try to get as close to 15,000 as possible. Because we do want to use the dark sign. So I see I got it at 1305. So now I'm just gonna pop a the gate ring on, kill this guy, because I don't want to gain souls from him. And then we're going to use the soul that gives us 200, the lost undead soul. And just take the gate ring off first. So that we have 1505. So now when we use the dark sign, we only permanently lose five, five souls. And the nice thing about the gate ring is no matter how much you fail, um, after we got the five souls, then it doesn't really matter because you're not permanently losing souls, right? So now we have four toxic miss. So I'm gonna. Sh so typically we should be able to poison him, poison Broy in one cast, and the other ones are just kind of backups. So we want to go to Harvel's resting place in the Grave of Saints, because here's where we're going to use the bonfire aesthetic, and this is going to make everything a lot harder and stronger. And it's also going to reset a lot of the items that we picked up earlier, so we get duplicate copies of them, which can't hurt. But now we want to travel to the other waypoint area where the Red Vanguard is at. And we can remove all these healing items because we don't need them anymore. And we'll equip the dark sign so that we can have faster teleports and farm it faster. So after we use the bonfire aesthetic at Harvel's resting area, we'll go to where the red vanguard is. And then we'll just go into our rotation. So the thing you'll be doing for the next few hours that it takes to farm the 50 awe stones. So just drop straight down here and climb up immediately. Don't try to back up because you don't want to spawn rats down there in case we make a mistake and you'll see later. And then we're just going to run through here and run down these steps and just kind of wait with your shield up. And he will always fall down just like that. And then we're going to come over here and we want to bait him into the stairs. 
because he will get stuck and we can hit him with a toxic mist and we can use these pillars to line of sight his uh his attack so i'm gonna bait him into the stairs i mean the stairs come on all right and then you're gonna pull him right like this you want him to come forward and he'll get stuck right there and you hit that guy with a poison mist or a toxic mist he'll get fully poisoned and then you just hold your shield up and wait the toxic mist will do 1485 damage so 1485 damage and you hit him twice with it and he'll die and you can kind of get the second spell ready a little bit ahead of time as you see the 1485 approach we have two extra toxic mists just in case like he doesn't want to cooperate or if we make a mistake we can still poison him to death by hitting him a couple extra times. I'm getting the dark sign ready so we can get our items and then teleport back to the, the bonfire. Alright, we'll grab this item real quick. Grabbing this item will spawn the, the rats as you'll see. So the best place at dark sign will be on the bridge because it's a leash point. Now it's really important when you go down these stairs that we jump off on the right of the stairs because jumping off on the left will spawn those rats. And you can see the rats will not follow you onto the bridge and will not aggro you from either side. That bridge is a safe spot. So when you dark sign, make sure you rest at the bonfire to reset your charges of toxic mist. Otherwise, you may have to die or fight Roy straight up. And he pretty much two shots you. Some of his attacks will one shot you. So we just jump straight down, climb back up immediately. Roy will spawn and just run straight through here. And these stairs, if you fall off, make sure you fall off on the right side of the stairs and don't cross the let to the left side. That's about as far as you want to get close because you do not want to spawn the rats down there. Life is going to suck if you do. You're going to have to poison Roy from the distance and I'm just going to bait him under the stairs again. Roy kind of wandered out a little bit. Maybe he'll wander back into the cloud and get poisoned. Yep. Otherwise, we would have had to use another toxic miss and it would have been not too bad. That's why we have extra charges. So, I'm also going to show you what will happen if you mess up and and Roy doesn't want to cooperate or he accidentally spawned rats. We'll show you alternative ways of poisoning him after this. Also, I kind of just noticed that I'm not in the Champions uh, Covenant yet. So after we kill this Roy, we'll head into the Champion's Covenant first, then we'll come back and I'll show you uh, the technique a couple of times. Uh, this is the technique one more time, and, I'll sh and then we'll end on uh, how to defeat Roy, or one of the ways you can defeat Roy if uh, you make a mistake with the stairs. Um, but if you think you can do this, or if you feel confident in your abilities, feel free to end the video here, or feel free to watch the end if you're curious but being in the champions covenant Roy will spawn infinitely so you should be able to farm all 50 awe stones from him um, with just one bonfire aesthetic in the current patch anyway also he will drop invisible armor for you the invisible aureus set uh, he has a chance at dropping additional awe stones so he'll drop an all stone as well as you getting one for defeating him, which is one of the reasons why I like getting this shield early on uh, to increase my item discovery. So that way, uh, for every all stone that he drops, that's one less time that I have to kill him. Or that you will have to kill him. And it's so nice being able to just have infinite teleports with Dark Sign because you don't have to worry about gaining souls if you do want to farm him for souls because you don't care about your soul memory uh, then you'll have to just run back to the bonfire or you can well uh, you probably won't have enough homeward bones really to to teleport all the time so it will take you a little bit longer 
and you can see like each each time it takes to kill Roy is about I don't know two minutes or so. So 50 stones, assuming none drop when you defeat him, probably take a handful of hours, two three. 100 minutes or so, maybe an hour and a half, if you're, if you're lucky. Oh, well, yeah, it falls down again. We'll bait him over so you can see the Austin. So normally, if you're not in the champions, uh, then Roy only spawns about 12 times per bonfire aesthetic. But being a part of the champions, you can cause him to keep spawning over and over again. It took me a while to figure out, like I tried lots of different strategies to figure out the easiest way for you guys to kill Roy. I did, I did not figure this method out until, I don't know, after like 50 deaths fighting him, trying different things out. And you can see like if he walks back I kind of walk towards the stairs because I want him to come straight towards me and because he can see me and technically attack through that stair but not fit that's what causes him to get stuck. So you can see ooh, he dropped an item, he dropped an awe stone and a gauntlet of Aureus. So we got basically two awe stones from that fight. I can put on these gauntlets, they are a gear upgrade, they're invisible. I wasn't human, I just made myself human so I could look, look cute. Look a lot better. A little bit more pleasing on the eyes. Alright, and then I will be showing you guys at the end what my soul memory level is, once again, uh, stats and and stuff at the closing. So I believe this time we will make a mistake and we'll show you how painful it is to to fight Roy without without bugging him up. At least we'll show you what happens when Roy doesn't want to play ball. It is tempting to want to like hit him with a poison mist from this distance, but just be patient. You know, it takes less time to kill him the correct way than it is to die and kill him the wrong way. So see, Roy didn't want to play ball this time, so we're just going to try to hit him with a poison mist. Maybe try to bait him into the poison mist. I fell off and spawned the rats behind me, uh, and that's no good. There they come. Because uh, I could have fought him here if I didn't spawn the rats, but oh well. And then we'll just kind of run away. Uh, these rats won't find me, and then I can see that he's about half hit points. So when he's at half hit points, so this is the reason why we drop straight down and we climb up immediately. We, we try not to spawn the rats. You want to back up a little bit because the rats to the back here left won't spawn. Click on him immediately and just immediately cast the poison mist. And then hopefully he'll get poison. If not, you'll hit him with a second mist. Those rats will spawn and you just back up. Keep your shield up, back up. And then when you get to that, that hole, you want to drop down. And then we'll just run, we'll just kind of run away a little bit, maybe pick up this item that respawned. Or he'll die. Now we have to like kind of like maneuver through these rats. Pick up the leggings. Ooh, got two of the four pieces already. Grab the silky smooth. Hopefully not die running through these rats up here. And then I just recommend uh, climbing up the ladder and going onto the bridge to Dark Sign. Don't even don't even try to Dark Sign with all those rats down there and these rats up here. It's just not safe. And you can pretty much always get him poisoned pretty pretty easily at the bottom of that ladder as long as you don't spawn the rats down there. So it's a pretty pretty rinse and repeat kind of thing. Maybe we'll kill Roy one more time before I show you guys 
my stats. You can fast forward a little bit to the end if you if you want. to check out the character card. But I definitely wanted to make sure I give you guys plenty of like proof that this can be done repeatedly and also um, you know various techniques on how to like bait him in in here kind of like what I do. So you just don't know that it's not like a a once in a lifetime thing. Usually when I'm farming Roy for the Allstones, I kind of just watch YouTube on my laptop or second monitor or you can listen to an audiobook or, or something. I'd, I definitely recommend keeping the shield up so if you want to enable the hotkey to auto block I think there's a button to auto block you can do that and then maybe watch YouTube videos or something uh, it, with the screen minimized or windowed and you don't have to worry about holding the black button I'm pretty sure there's an auto block button in the, in the hotkey bindings because he will shoot daggers at you and those daggers can hit you or darts or whatever Ooh, heavy crossbow and they will like two shot you All right, so I'll show you kind of what we have at the end. So I have the Morningstar, the Flame. Using these rings, you can kind of switch out some rings if you want. Um, armor is negligible. And here's the character card. So I'm level 19, 34,571 soul memory, 10 Vigor, 10 attunement, 15 strength, 7 dexterity, the rest are all sixes. With um, 739 hit points because I took some damage but I think I really have more around 930 so this is the easiest way I can do it at this low soul memory if you want to do it at higher soul memory it'll definitely be easier thanks for watching I'll see you next time and good luck farming that vanquisher seal and have fun punching people in the face all right see ya Welcome.